project began with a hospital that I was working with, and they were interested in deciding on the right number of beds in one of their units in the hospital. So they were looking at their skilled nursing unit, or also called their post-acute care unit. And what made this a sort of an interesting situation to look at is there was some disagreement amongst hospital management on what they should do. Uh, some in management had looked at this unit, looked at their performance, looked at some of the costs involved, the care they're providing, and they felt strongly that they should reduce the number of beds in this unit. These were resources that could be better used elsewhere in the hospital. Uh, but there were others in management that said, well, you know, wait a minute, there's actually some other value that this unit provides, and it's got to do with this patient, patient blocking idea. Okay? So that was sort of what led me into this problem, looking at patient flow and, be and the bed mix. So to give a couple examples of what patient blocking is, you know, think about this uh, post-acute care unit that, that this hospital is interested in. So if we decide to reduce the number of beds, well, eventually they're gonna become full more frequently. So if post-acute care starts filling up, then some of the other units that feed into post-acute care, so let's say there's a patient in a surgical unit, a patient had surgery, they've been in the surgical unit a couple days, they've improved enough where they can go to the lower level of care in post-acute care. Well, if post-acute care is full, that patient gets blocked. They can't get in. So they're occupying a bed in the surgical unit, a higher level, more expensive care that they don't need. And then eventually what happens is the surgical unit starts filling up more frequently. So you get this kind of feedback through the hospital by making a change in post-acute care. It's creating blocking that can back up into the other units in the hospital. And one of the negative, imp another negative impact of that is surgical procedures may need to be canceled or delayed. So if there are no beds available, they aren't gonna do the surgery. Okay, so that's one of the potential problems with this blocking effect. And it's starting, you know, it shows this idea that we really have to think about the hospital as a whole. You can't just look at that one post-acute care unit. Now, to build this model requires patient flow data. Okay, so we needed some extensive data on patient flow, the history. You need to know what are some of the typical flow paths through the hospital of different patient types, whether it's a heart patient, cancer patient, surgical patient. And there's lots of uncertainty. You know, how long a patient spends in each unit is uncertain. Where they go next in terms of the care in the hospital is uncertain. How many patients of a given type arrive in a day is uncertain. So we need to kind of look at a large amount of this past data, pull it from their information systems. And that gives us an idea of, of typical patient flow in this hospital, and then we can apply our queuing models to that and be able to estimate blocking. So what we did is we used uh, queuing methods. So there's some mathematical tools, and, and we kind of, we, we took that as a starting point and developed our own method based on the queuing models to be able to estimate how much blocking will go on in the rest of the hospital when I make a change in one particular unit, or in two units, whatever we might want to do. So how do we decide how many beds should be in each of the units? Well, there are, there are different goals or there's different objectives that the hospital thinks about. You know, the simplest thing you might say is, well, let's make every unit equally important. Blocking is equally important in every unit. Well, that's a pretty simplistic story. Actually, you know, they're more concerned about the units where the patients are the sickest. You, you don't want full units where the sickest patients are entering. Another thing the hospital worries about is patient turnaways, the ambulance diversion, the canceled surgical procedures. So you might think of the blocking and the bed mix decision in terms of minimizing the amount of block or minimizing the number of patient turnaways. That means you focus in on those units where you have the most patients entering into the hospital. Um, with limited resources, you have to think about costs and revenues. So what's the cost effectiveness of the different units? Um, so what we did is we ran our model using their patient flow data, their bed cost data, and we ran it under different scenarios, depending on which of these different objectives we make more important than another. So, and, and then it's up to the management of the hospital to decide, well, what is the ranking of our priorities here in terms of patient turnaways, handling the sickest patients, um, you know, anything else they might consider. So, 
So you do get slightly different recommendations depending on which goal you give more importance. But for this hospital, what was kind of interesting is that the recommendations in terms of this post-acute care unit were very consistent. So over the past few years, they had been reducing the number of beds, and those first couple reductions were needed. They had too much capacity. They could take those resources and better use them somewhere else in the hospital. But the recent rounds of reductions, now we were getting to the point where post-acute care was getting full, and it was causing blocking that fed back through the rest of the hospital. So no matter which objective we gave more importance, we were getting the same recommendation in general. They needed to slightly increase the number of post-acute care beds. So, so we did get a nice result out of this study and we were able to make this recommendation. You know, here, here's what you need to do. So you know, based on this business analytic model, the data we collected, we could make a concrete recommendation um, on this very complicated decision.